Hi everyone, Luke here from Pigmento Films and in today's video I've got a tutorial looking at using the Atomus Ninja V with the Canon R7. Now this is more of an advanced guide, there are other guides around the uh, around on YouTube you could watch but this is simply to get the most out of your camera. Now we've got a few objectives in this video. Number one, we're going to figure out how to do um, 3x2 open gate recording so that you can recrop your video for various social media feeds. Number two, I'm going to teach you how to do dual recording. And number three, I'm going to teach you how to do HDR, PQ, wide dynamic range recording. And at the very end, I've got a very, very important and secret objective to make sure, so make sure you watch to the very end. Now, before we get onto that, I want to explain my why. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm fortunate enough to own a couple of Lumix cameras and their video side of things is so good and everything just works very intuitively. So I ended up buying a Canon R7 because I love wildlife photography. When I'm not being a professional videographer, I love going out and taking uh, wildlife photos and I'm trying to extend that into video as well. But I found I've been a little bit hampered by the Canon in certain aspects, especially when trying to do things like dual recording. Now there was one really, really key piece of information for me that I wanted to try to, one key problem I should say, that I wanted to try and fix. And that was, if I'm taking wildlife photos, I don't want my wildlife uh, photo taken to be interrupted too much by the video aspects. So I was looking for a way I could record the screen whilst being able to take photos. Essentially what I've found out from that is I could record open gate or really it's 3 by 2 so it's kind of open gate with air quotes but you're still getting that top and bottom extra information and you can still recrop everything exactly the same as I can in my, in my Lumix S1 open gate mode. Now we're going to get through all of that. I have got a really thick amount of notes and I was going to write a script but instead I'm going to go along step by step from my notes. Now this is very much uh, experimental, everything seems to work but it's going to be on you guys to give it a test and get back to me in the comments so I can make more videos about this. Now the first thing we're going to be looking at is the full screen recording, so I'm going to get right onto that now. Okay, so I'm going to be reading from my notes, so if I'm looking down it's because I'm reading from my notes. So the first objective is full screen, quote unquote, open gate recording. Okay, so firstly, in order for this to work, obviously you need to have your Atomus Ninja already attached to your Canon, that should be a given. Then, what we're going to do is, we need to be able to toggle the screen information off. Rather than resetting my whole camera, I'm actually going to go through my settings, and if you run into any trouble, just let me know in the comments and I can get back to you. So step one, so we've got our Atomus on, we've got our Canon R7 switched on, and we're going to go where it says at the, at the top left side of the Atomus. I'm going to click where it says HDP59. This is going to bring up video options and it's going to have input. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to trigger and we're going to make sure that trigger is toggled on so that the toggle is green. This is going to allow time code recording. So in a bit, I'm going to, when I get into jaw recording, I'm, that is going to allow us to trigger the Atomus to record at the same time as the Canon R7 is going to record. So at the moment, the bottom of my menu reads HDR Auto. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. So after we've pressed the trigger option, and we're going to come back to the HDR bit in a little bit, we're going to press menu on the, on the Canon, and then we're going to go from the camera icon, so the red menu, page four, and what you would usually have in here is you would usually have where it says clarity, and you've got some other picture options as well. At the moment, mine are off, and that is because in a bit I'm gonna be shooting in HDR PQ mode. Now, if you're okay shooting in 10 bit, and I'm gonna come on to this in a bit, then, then you're probably gonna be wanting to shoot in HDR PQ. However, that does bring its own set of challenges with it as well. So what you could do in here, if you wanna shoot in 8 bit for really quick turnaround times, is you might wanna take your clarity down a little bit, just so your image looks a little, a little bit less sharp and a little bit less digital. However, you have to reset it to zero if you wanna shoot in, H, uh, in HDR PQ. Okay, so once you finish the menu four, go across to menu five, and don't touch anything in lens aberration correction. 
but turn everything else off apart from dust delete. Don't touch dust delete, but high ISO speed noise reduction is off. Long exposure noise reduction is off. We're not going to need those. Next, we're going to go to page nine. So next, we're going to go to page nine. I'm going to go to OVF and turn that off. So make sure that's turned off. Then we're going to go to shoot info display. You're going to copy what I do here. So screen info, I have one and four, and that is it. That's all I have turned on for those. Then we go to VF vert. So VF vertical display, turn that off. Grid display, turn that off. Then we're going to move on to page 10, which we've done all that. So we can press menu to take us back to the menu. Scroll across. Now at the top, we're going to go to movie record. For me, the best balance is 4K. 59 um, or 4k 60 in IPB just to keep things simple that's because for my purposes I'm going to be recording wildlife videos so I need a higher frame rate for slow motion purposes now we're going to come back to this in a little bit but essentially we're doing everything in photo mode so make sure on your camera you have toggled on to the photo mode you're not in the video mode this is in photo mode Okay, so in page three, we're going to turn preview autofocus to enable. This is really, really important. So once that's done, we're going to go to page four and we're going to turn all of the focus guides off. Uh, that includes peaking and the uh, focus assist as well. So MF peaking settings off, focus guide off. Then we're going to go all the way over to menu five, which is the spanner icon. So from here, we're going to go to page four. We're going to go to HDMI, uh, HDMI resolution. We're going to make sure that's on 1080. So it's going to put out a 1080p signal to your HDMI. Okay, so we're almost there, but there's one really, really important step. If you don't do this, you'll get autofocus squares on your screen. So what you'll probably, what you should have is some information on your screen now, and your screen should look like this. So you've got your shutter speed, your aperture, uh, your exposure meters at the bottom. What you're going to do then is you can press info to toggle those off. However, if you've got autofocus still on, annoyingly, it's still going to pop up on the back of your screen. So what you're going to do is you press the little magnifying glass button. So over on this side of the camera. And it's going to bring up your uh, M F M F N button and if you press M F N at the front of the camera towards the dial near the trigger you can toggle by pressing info that display on and off this is essential if you want to be doing vlogs and stuff like that or you're not too confident in manually focusing you'll need this because you don't want those autofocus squares and markers sort of randomly shooting off all over the screen so really, really important step, and I cannot stress how long this took me to find, and I can't even believe I found it at all. I didn't know you could do this. Press the little magnifying glass over on this side, so it's underneath the star. Press M, F, N at the front of the camera near the shutter button, and then press info to toggle it on or off. You probably want it off. Now, if you want to come out of this, just half press your shutter, and there we go. Right now, there is an equally important bit, and this was the very last thing that we come across. And uh, I'm so glad we went out to shoot the end of this y yesterday, so I'm kind of talking in two different uh, tenses here. But essentially what we found was, if you keep the camera unattended, you'll get a, a, a viewfinder warning coming up, and that's gonna, come, uh, that's gonna be displayed on the back of your Atomos Ninja 5 recording. And after I've shown you how to do this, I'll just explain a little bit about why I've done everything like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press menu. We're gonna go to, first we're gonna go to power saving. We're gonna disable everything in power saving. So we go to menu, we go to the spanner icon, which is menu five, it's a yellow menu. We go to page three, we scroll down to power saving and just disable everything on there. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to page four. On page four, where it's a screen uh, screen slash viewfinder display, we're going to tap on that, 
and we're going to we're going to change that to screen so it's only the screen that's dis displaying that should be everything so now your camera shouldn't automatically turn off and you shouldn't get any random signs just popping up in the middle of your recording so why have we done this well what i have now allowed you to do is essentially record the back screen of your canon r7 in a as a clean feed that means you are now recording in a 3 by 2 aspect ratio which allows you to do all of those cropping options so what are some of the caveats well the first caveat is the fact that you can only record in 1080p honestly i'm used to shooting in 4k and even 6k and the video footage out of this is really really good if you're going to be putting stuff on social media this is fine Again, you can even upscale this, which technically doesn't upscale the resolution, but you'll probably want to do that for YouTube. It does have some benefits as well. Now, the next thing is, okay, you've got no display options. So how do we know how we're monitoring our exposure and that? So one way of doing that is we can hard press the shutter and that's going to bring up the display and the autofocus squares that I was talking about. As you can see, 1 125th, uh, f2.8 and we're on it underexposed but a more useful way of doing that because remember your atomus is going to record everything that your canon r7 is putting out so the more useful way of doing that is if we tap on the on the atomus we can go to uh, peaking to help with your focus assist we could use zebras to help with your exposure assist and we can use histogram as well to do exactly the same thing so you've got you've got two you've got three really useful tools there to do all of your exposure and your focus assisting from the atomus itself it is an amazing bit of um hardware i really really love the atomus ninja i think it's such a good bit of kit right so that's the first objective down well done you are now shooting in in a three by two open gate aspect ratio on your canon r7 but there's more okay so the next thing we're going to do is dual recording now remember everything is done in the photo mode so when you turn your camera on don't toggle it over to the video mode keep it in the photo mode so from the photo mode you can press record and it will and it will record video what that's going to do is it's going to jump into a 16 by 9 aspect ratio now do you remember those controls earlier when i was in the camera and i switched it to uh, 4k ipb in 60p well, when I press record, that will, sh that will initiate those settings. The benefits of that are you can integrate those settings into your um, false, into your 3x2 recordings because it's such a high resolution. So you do get a little bit of the best of both worlds here. And you could use that for maybe recording B-roll. Now, what we're going to do is on your Atomus Ninja 5, you've probably noticed a jump cut and my, my hard drive is back in there. Uh, so that was a mistake on my part. We're going to press the top left of the Atomus where it says uh, trigger. Remember, you've got to have that triggered. You've got to have time code uh, trigger on. So just double check you've done that. Let's press record. It will initiate the Atomus to record as well. It will initiate the Canon to record. Here we go. Let's stop there. Let's press play on the Canon R7 and voila. You have now got dual recording on your Canon R7. Basically what you can do is you can integrate all of that 4K footage into your 1080p 3 by 2 aspect ratio footage. This is great if you're going to be recording B-roll because you've got so much more resolution that can easily be squeezed down into a 3 by 2 1080p or a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now there is one thing you probably noticed and that is the record button. Now, 4K is approximately four times the resolution of 1080p, so you could just crop that out and you won't notice a difference. But what we could do is simply toggle this, your, the, the on-off switch over to the video mode instead. And that is automatically going to be into whatever filming setup you had already set up previously. Now, I can make a video all about the strictly about the video mode as well and I, if you're if there's interest in that I will do a complete breakdown of how to use Canon C-Log 3 
and what shooting settings I often use for more professional work where I'm shooting entirely in 4K for sort of projects that might be displayed in other areas outside of just social media. Now, I'm gonna to toggle back to the camera mode. The next thing we're gonna look at is really exciting. It's the thing that, that really excited me as I've grown to start really like color correction and color grading. I'm no expert though, I'll say that right now. And that is shooting in a wide dynamic range. To that, you can basically get the absolute maximum quality. I kind of think this is a little bit more important than just resolution, but uh, a warning from the start, shooting in a log mode or shooting in uh, HDR modes do have their own set of challenges. So HDR PQ is gonna give you a much more, essentially it's gonna give you a much broader range, uh, color range that you can grade your footage with. It specifically protects the highlights, so it gives an extra stop to the highlights, but it does come at the expense of the shadows. However, I have come up with a way to negate that, and it's not even any different from using any type of other sort of log footage, to be honest with you. You do run into these sort of uh, problems, and there's usually a way to sort of negate it and get the best, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna press menu on the camera, then we're gonna go to page two, that's on the camera icon, the red menu, and we're gonna to go to HDR PQ, and we're gonna turn that on. So now we go to enable. On the Atomus, you wanna to go to the top left. You wanna find that menu where we found the time code recording. Then on the very bottom, you wanna enable HDR recording. That will enable you to record HDR PQ to the, Atom the Atomus in a Rec 2020 color space. So that's gonna record in a Rec 2020 color space, which is, huge uh, the typical standard is rec 709 and what we're going to have to do with this is convert it down into rec 709 color space later on but essentially a little bit like grading a raw photo it's just going to give you a lot more latitude to get the video where you want it now i'm uh, now i'm editing in premiere pro on a windows pc now back in the day you would have had to have used a look and i still use a look for my log footage but what I found out, and this took me a long time as well, is um, you can actually go into the timeline and if you simply change, you drag, the, drag your footage into the timeline first, go to your timeline settings, and then change the color space from Rec 2020 to Rec 709, and it will automatically convert those colors for you. So as I just said, in Premiere Pro, you're gonna go to add footage, uh, add footage to your sequence, go to settings, change the color, color space to Rec 709, no looks needed. It might be it might be different in DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut. But then what you're going to want to do is we want to get rid of those noisy shadows. Okay, so we're going to have to re rewind. It's a dead simple tip. Usually what people will say is you have to overexpose a couple of stops. I think there's a more scientific way of doing it than that. But if you want things dead simple, literally in your footage as you're recording, just overexpose by one stop. Then, in the Lumetri part of your Adobe Premiere Pro, take it down by about 0.9 or by one stop, so you bring in that back again. And then all those highlights that looked like they were blowing out, they'll come back. Now, there's a lot more to HDR PQ than just doing this. If you want a full-on guide on how to shoot in HDR PQ, make the colors look good, and make sure you're not over or underexposing, please let me know in the comments because it'll be a lot to add to this video and it's going to take me a while to sort of sit and make that video. If you're interested in it though, I'll happily do that because it, if, you're a, if you're a perfectionist and you want to get the most out of the, everything I'm showing today, HDR PQ is the way to go. I did have one other super secret objective um, that there's a problem you might run into whilst doing all of this. So, we are shooting in 3x2. We are shooting in a wide dynamic range. However, the Canon R7 won't put an audio feed from your HDMI into your Atomos. So you might have noticed if you just run ahead and now you've come back angrily going, I can't record audio, that there's no audio. Well, again, thanks to the amazing bit of get kit that is the Atomos Ninja 5, you can record audio as well. And it's so simple to do, but you will need a powered microphone. All you'll do, is a lot like this microphone I've got here, is you'll plug your powered microphone, meaning it needs to be powered by a battery, aka not phantom powered, into the mic port on your Atomus Ninja. 
Once you're on there, you're going to click the sound monitoring bars. And then you're going to go to mic line and you're going to change it to mic line level um, minus 40 dBU. Uh, that is basically going to record your mic. And you can change and adjust your settings as well. So you can choose to add or take gain away. And over here, if you drag your top, if you drag your footage over to Premiere Pro, you might find that annoyingly you'll have a load of tracks. So just make sure you turn any of the tracks off apart from the mod that you're using. And there you go, that was the super secret bonus tip at the very end. You have everything now. You have got 3x2, you've got wide dynamic range, you've got microphone inputs, you've got um, exposure and all the fo uh, and focusing monitoring tools courtesy of the Atomus. This has been a absolute mammoth effort. It's taken me a lot of hard work. So you didn't think we was gonna go through all of that and not do some testing, did you? So everything we have just done, we are now putting into practice. We're shooting in a three by two aspect ratio, which allows you to do this. So this is square, this is nine by 16, and this is 16 by nine. And you should be able to do any other social media aspect ratio from this as well, which is what's awesome about OpenGate. Now granted, this is only in 1080p, which means it's not gonna be as quite as high quality as 4K footage, but honestly, the footage looks great. And for social media, especially on mobile phones, this will look perfect. It will be nothing wrong with this whatsoever. As a community, let me know if you've got any tweaks. Let me know if this works on any other systems. Let me know in the comments, and I can make future videos about this as well. If you are a YouTuber and you come across my channel and you see this video, if you want to go, want to go and make your own video about this as well, I would really, really appreciate if you give me a shout out as well. It's taken a lot of effort. So it'd be nice to be gassed up a little bit. Now, I do have a message for Canon as well. Why on earth have you made it such a pain in the ass to do this? There is no reason that on your flagship APS-C camera, you've made it such a pain in the butt to be able to do dual recording. So one caveat you guys might have already noticed is whilst dual recording, we can't use the, the Canon R7 screen. Well, for professionals or passionate hobbyists, it's so important that we can see both screens. One screen might be output to a monitor for a director or a client, whilst we can monitor the other screen or the viewfinder. It makes no sense for you guys to purposely do this. It's just mean-spirited. Could you fix this in a firmware update or at least do it in your next iteration of the camera? Nobody is going to pick this camera over an R5 or a C70 if they've already got that budget. You're not going to affect anyone. But what you are going to do is you're going to bring those vital tools to a wider audience, which ultimately means more camera sales for you. Right, so with that tangent out of the way, I want to just say thanks to everyone who's helped me, mainly my girlfriend who's been really patient. I'd really appreciate if everyone hits the subscribe button, the bell icon, because I've got more videos coming out in the future. I'm also doing a Frankenstein thing here as well. I've got uh, another test going on with my, I've got a new mic because my road mic was falling apart. Uh, so I'm using a brand called Boya. So let me know if this sounds any good. I've turned it into a wireless mic, which is why it's kind of on the side here. Um, let me know if that sounds decent. But other than that, that is, the, that is it for this tutorial. I will give as much information in the description and I'll get back to you soon with another video.